Well, hey, what's going on, guys? It's almost 10 o'clock. It's uh, October 21st, 2020. Will this guy ever shut up? Hell no. We were John Sierra from California. What's going on? This letter is addressed over to AV News crew. What's going on, guys? Yeah, I'm going to take care of one particular video that uh, had to delete because I couldn't. I wasn't communicating effectively in the damn thing in the first place. And I just wanted to get the message out that uh, the videos I sent over, I hope they didn't upset you too much. This time of season we're dealing with right now, it's hard enough what a lot of us, the numbers are saying. Besides the COVID escalating the tension slightly. The holiday seasons normally do bring out more of the depression. Now, if you notice the picture I've got down below on the cabinet over here, I've talked about a hell of a lot of videos I've got on YouTube. Maybe that's like over 500. That's a scary count. I thought I had maybe about 100 or maybe 20. I lost count. But in all that, I've been trying to explain to people my own life, my own depression, my own anxieties, politics, health. And you know, I am not an expert. I am a witness, an observer, a guy going through life as it is. I mean, I'm almost 55 next month, and I've seen, actually not next month, January. I've seen too much. At least I keep telling myself that way. And I've also been through a hell of a lot. As I was trying to explain in other videos I've had, from the recent ones I've just got uploaded already. Trying to explain to people why these things are happening, at least in my own interpretation. And, so, and as I said before, I'm not an expert in anything, guys. Nothing. I'm a college student, a five-year college student going over to Antelope Valley College. Struggling like crazy, but, you know, it's something I promised them and I promised myself to take care of a long time ago. I screwed up in college because I wasn't mature enough. I wasn't mentally ready for that damn thing. And, and, and as I said before, my other videos, mentally deranged, psychotic, depressed, drugged out, and not with the illegal drugs either. So we're talking about medications at this point. Alcatan really does a mess with a person's brain back in the 80s and 90s. And the family and the doctor didn't even pick up on a damn thing. Roche Laboratory sure as hell didn't know about damn thing until about 20 or 30 years down the road. They got more information concerning about what kind of mental health defects the damn drug does. Supposed to clear up acne. It was really for cancer drug. They never did do any studies. So, yeah, that screwed things up for me and my family left and right. Family history concerning about mental health illnesses ranging from a whole bunch of topics. A lot of my aunts and uncles passed away, one form or another, either by Alzheimer's at this point, or blowing one's head off, or drug abuse, or alcohol abuse. It's a lot. A lot to say, a lot to take in. Either their families are still dealing with it, and coping with the after effects, and dealing with the damn disease all over the place. And my mother and my brother... Ma died of respiratory. Dave died of diabetes. Stroked out. But he's had 32 years of recovery. He would have had 33. So when the holiday season kicks in, the most special holiday season we've got right now, it's supposed to be bringing out the joy. And, and I feel the misery. Right? I feel the misery. Make sure you don't do this, but I'm going to do this anyway. This is going to screw it up. So, you'll forgive me. I have to screw it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Just unplug your damn life support computer. But give me a break, will you? I just need to do this for a quick hop, hop minute or two. So, bear with me, guys. Show you a little bit of uh, decoration. Just for a little personal sake, okay? Trying to get myself... Situated so I can get a little bit of holiday cheer, okay? Still with me? Alright. 
I've had this set up for over a year. It's not bad. Dusty as hell. But, uh, to be honest, it was better last year when I had lights on the wall the damn place. Freshen and other things that you had. Yeah, I hardly ever do this, except if I'm trying to make a point of this. Uh, 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 this. I know there's going to be people watching this damn thing. They're going to be saying, okay, I'm a weirdo. Well, well, an idiot. Counts as much. Reality check. The guy who I've taken care of for a hell of a long while, my brother, who took care of our mother, the last several years of her life. And I took care of my brother for the last several years of his life. So I'm trying to take care of me now. And yes, I understand about depression at this point over here since I'm still going through the damn thing. And, and no, I haven't taken any medications for it. And no, I haven't gotten any psychological help or gotten through group sessions, even though I would love to. You ever been through a damn HMO before that drives you nuts? I used to work for Blue Cross for several years. Don't tell me what PPO and HMO is all about. But I have to go to a damn doctor to see if there's going to be anybody I need to go to. And they're going to pickle and brain my damn money like crazy. So you're forced to limited income. you got to do what you got to do. Reality checks, okay? This is reality checks in my situation here. I mean... People younger than I am are having issues. They're really having issues concerning about social statuses, and not to mention their social awareness and their peer groups and peer pressures way before COVID kicked in. COVID kicks in and shuts down everybody, from the kids all the way to the adults at this point over here. Now, us adults are supposed to be able to handle this stuff, right? Who says... I've had other adults that are living in my damn apartment complex. If they're without families, they're driving themselves nuts. The kids are running around without masks. I've got COVID-19 in this apartment complex I live in. I mean, if you're talking about one thing after another thing after another thing to add depression to the list, oh, hell yeah, we've got it here. And I have... These Christmas decorations put up here because they seem to be a defense for me. I've had the Christmas decorations up over there for over the year because I know I was getting depressed left and right and I needed something. Maybe as a constant reminder, dusty as it is right now, but a constant reminder to me of what's important. And somehow there has to be a message of hope. There has to be a message of positive something. I could say the F word, faith. But some people out there don't believe. Well, belief is kind of hard these days. Who or what do you believe in? Me, personally, I I know who or what to believe in at this point over here, but it's always a stretch because I'm always screwing myself up in that situation. I know the forces out there trying to tell me, like, latch on to me, I'm all right, you're okay, you'll get, you'll get through this one way or another. And the next thing I know, something else happens already and it stretches that, that theory out the window. It's kind of hard to talk about things like this, you know. I mean, yeah, easy enough when I'm talking about other, to other people on the other videos and I'm more communicative and more 
open and loose, and I'm like, yeah, I know hip. I'm, I'm very hip about that. Give me a freaking break. Me showing part of my my world. That's a stretch. That's a stretch. And trying to communicate effectively to people. You know, I, I, that's what I've been trying to do in a lot of my videos. I'm also trying to effectively trying to communicate to myself because well, let's face it, I don't even listen to my own damn self anymore these days. So maybe I'm just doing it for posterity's sake that maybe if eventuality I do pass on. Maybe somebody can actually record that there was a John C. Weaver, actually a John Cameron Weaver out there. Actually recorded something about his own life, whatever it was, and the insanity that was going on around him in certain years. Not to mention grief, beyond grief, and coping with pain and stress and everything else. Which I'm surprised I haven't killed myself just yet either by drinking or by using drugs or using other methods, except diabetes is going to kill me. I know that for sure. I've got a history of it. i got a history of cancer in my family. Because I know there's medical complications in the family that's going to get me one way or another. And the thing of it is, regarding this depressional situation in the holiday season, how I really don't want to, want to be involved with the damn holiday at this point over here or... or Getting into people's situations just to see if there's anything else I can help them with. Because in a depressional situation, the only thing you're, you're thinking about is getting yourself even more and more bottled at this point. And when you're thinking about depression all the time, and when you're thinking about grief, of the loss of the people that you've cared about for a hell of a long while, it's easy enough, it's easy enough to find a, to find a tool or something to, that's it. Game over. The hardest damn thing is finding a reason to live. The hardest thing to do is waking up in the morning when your mind's a little bit more clear on some occasions. And if you actually have visitations of your family in your dreams, oh, that gets to you right there. That really gets to you. That gets to me a hell of a lot, I'll tell you. Uh, it's kind of hard to deal with that in the morning, but when I'm not thinking about it, I'm usually slurping down a cup of coffee or something like that just to get myself going. I get myself depressed as hell by watching the damn news and seeing what's going on. The world's coming to an end. The world's coming to an end. You may think this is comical, but it isn't. This is life. This is happening right now. I've got people on social media telling me that these things are happening are fake. People dying left or right. Well, people are dying left or right, so let's put this into a context and perspective, shall we? People are always dying left. Why are we so concerned about it? The cavalier attitude I keep running into people online and also in person on some occasions. I'm like, you sorry sons of bitches. You don't even feel, do you? What you do, lock out your damn humanity, your damn emotions? You sorry sons of bitches. That pisses me off. You don't even care. Or try this one. Consider me mad at this point, right? Not mad as an angry, mad as a mad as a hatter, right? A lunatic, a raving lunatic. I care about dogs. We had a scrapper about four years ago in this apartment complex. He kept barking and yelling at people. Their owners kept releasing this dog to go out without any leash or anything, and the dog would come back. But the dog would be running around by itself, even out in the street sometimes. He kept telling the people who owned the dog, you can't do this. You're going to lose the dog. Oh, it's in God's hands. It's in God's hands. He's all right. It's in God's hands. It got to the point where a lot of people were sick and tired of the dog, except for me. I started to like the dog. 
I thought he was a hell of a scrapper. I'd like to have him for a pet. Trust a companion. Add him to the family. The next thing I hear is a damn car screech. A thump. And a car peeling out. And I couldn't even get the license plate of that son of a bitch. His name is Mojo. He's a mutt. Middle-aged, running around like crazy. Brown and white watches all over him. Short little dude. Feisty as hell. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at this dead body, and I'm looking back at the neighbor, and they're shrugging it off. I wanted to go after them like crazy. And they finally started to cry because they finally lost their dog. And I felt a hell of a lot of anger and I wanted to say some nasty things. I wanted to do I was go home and cry. My brother, who I was taking care of at the time, was asking me, what the hell happened, John? said, Mojo died. He knew who Mojo was. Mojo even kept barking at him, but my brother didn't kick at him like everybody else did. He just let him bark. He knew I was torn apart this way. I loved dogs ever since then. Ever since I was a young kid. And I know what happens when a dog gets nailed by a damn car. It hurts. I've had a lot of dogs lost because of other health issues. I've had a dog die in my arms because a car hit him and sped off. And I couldn't get to him in time to save his ass. I am so watchful of the dogs we have over here because I don't want them ending up a street pizza. And every time I see one in the street, I could not help but cry for the beast. Pray for him. I don't know why. Humans can be the most uncaring, savage creations ever sprouted up who have no heart and no sense. For dealing with the dogs better than I deal with humans. And then again, I deal with humans anyway. And I still cry for the people I care about. Call me a fool, call me an idiot, I don't care. Suicide, they sing about, isn't painless. A mass movie song. Suicide isn't painless, but it does bring on a hell of a lot of changes. And I won't take it or leave it. Because it does affect me and everybody else around me. Trying to reach that person who's feeling despondent in many ways. The hardest damn thing is to understand they're not going to communicate openly and willingly. The hardest damn thing for them to do. And they want to get it out. But they're afraid of getting judged. I was the same way. My brother was the same. I said in one particular video, actually I don't know, a few videos concerning about my family history, my brother tried to kill himself before he got clean and sober. A lot of things we could have contributed that saved his life. And 
I'm grateful that uh, he lived long enough to make a difference in a lot of people's lives. And even though I do grieve a great deal, and I've got a lot of reasons to kill myself, It's not time yet. I still want to do a few things. I may or may not be able to get a chance to them, but I want to finish my schooling. I want to prove to my family, and I'll regret the living crap out of it, that I can complete college. I don't care if it's a little community level college, I don't care. I wanted to get college taken care of and proved to my mother that yes, I am now mature enough, ready enough, and I should have been this way 30 years ago, but I wasn't. I was nowhere near it. I was so chemically screwed up with a di with some kind of pharmaceutical nightmare that it made me want to try to commit suicide and, and think about it constantly. And it was affecting me a great deal more than I thought and realized there's no amount of money or compensation that can break up that can make up that stuff I don't want the compensation what I want to do is work on the stuff I have to take care of now I will live alone if I have to I'll die alone if I have to but if somehow in the time I've got left if I can actually make a difference in someone's life. If I can actually honestly say to another person, look, I know you're feeling like shit, so am I. And believe me, we're walking in each other's moccasins right now. You ain't low in this damn crap. And that damn stuff going through your head right now is all bullshit anyway. But the thing of it is, you've got to get that stuff off your damn chest first. You got to get it off one way or another. See what it is. Take a step back, breathe, and say, "Okay." Just okay. Why I say that? because I've given you a moment to live. You step back from the problem. Look at it from a different perspective with a clearer head. And see the people around you. Know the people who actually are going to be walking with you through this thing. And if you happen to look down and you see another pair of shoes that you just didn't notice look at the person next to you who had just changed shoes with you then look at that your own shoes you guys are walking the same damn path you guys are walking the same path because the other guy's already been through it or the other person they're going to get you through this one way or another. But you still have to make the decision to do so. you got to feel like, okay, just for one minute, just for one second, I can tell myself, okay. What does that mean? you have to figure that one out your first self. But for me, it's like, okay, I'm taking a breath. I'm taking the buffer zone. I'm going to analyze. I'm going to take a step back and see why I'm part of the problem and how I can be part of the solution. And I'm going to see who my friends are and who are the people who are going to be walking me through this damn thing. And who are the other idiots who are just on the sidelines saying, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't think I know? Been there. Done it. So I can tell the other person, look, I walked it. Tell me something I don't already know. No, I haven't shot up with drugs. I've had drugs shot up into me. I've died three times on an operating table at the age of four years old. You don't think I have enough mental issues as it is? 
have a lifetime of dealing with doctors and hacks and quacks and everything else. Tell me something I don't already know. I've had parental abuse on some occasions. I've had a lot of silent treatments on the many more occasions. And half the time, I deserved it in the first place. I've got into a fist fight or two with my brother, but only as kids. As adults, we had to step back and see what the hell was going on before we actually talked to each other. And peer pressure? Shit. I avoided peer crazy. See, I've got stories. I've talked to people. I've done videos. I'm not an expert. There's no way I'm an expert, but Need me, fine. I'm here. Pass the video off left and right. Have the people be bored to death and fall asleep under the sound of my melodious voice. But if I can be used, fine. I don't have transportation, okay? I have dial a ride. I've got Skype. Charges me an arm leg, but I can get I can do Skype. I don't do calls in the middle of the night, though. That's the problem. I still have to sleep sometimes. But I will try to do whatever else I can do. No guarantees. But there should be one guarantee. Is that the person's open and ready to listen. Maybe that person can be only if they're ready to do it. You can't force it down people's throat. You can't force help down people's throat. They gotta want it so damn bad that they're willing to say, all right, okay. All you gotta say is, okay. Okay, now what? We take a moment, we take a step back, we breathe. We take it a thing at a time. That's all you can do. Take it a moment at a time. I discovered that going into 12 step programs left and right. You step back, you breathe, you say, okay, and then you start looking at the damn thing all over again. You don't allow the fear to judge, you don't allow the fear to cloud you up. And I've had a hell of a lot of time for that. I've had a hell of a lot of anger to deal with this and start with. And believe me, I'm nowhere near what they would consider normal or perfect at this point. I'm still collateral damage. But I'll hang in there for today. I'm still alive, so I'm not planning on killing myself just yet. Ask me again tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Have a nice day, guys.